Hello and welcome to Tennessee Valley this morning. My white shoes. I'm WTMB. <laughs> Joe shoes. and Kim Palo. She'll Thank you, Jennifer. You Thank cover you, that. Jennifer, cover the shoes. Uh, Joe and Kim Palo with you on this middle of the week Wednesday morning, as we are each and every Wednesday morning. Every Wednesday. And Joe, they're not white shoes. I mean, because if they they're were cream. white, I mean, you couldn't do that. It's not Easter yet, and there's the whole guys don't rule. fall into that. Yes, thing. they do. First and if you all, are wearing white shoes, we'd have problems. No, no. Seriously. First of all, a couple things. <laughs> I don't think that guys fall into that category like women do. But even if they do, I think it's okay now to wear white. Uh, I, think I don't think the rule is as stiff as it used to be. Right. You know, in Florida, you were raised in Florida, and then I moved there no shoes. in the 70s, and that rule didn't really apply there, and it was the hardest thing. But the rule that still does apply is no black nylons with white shoes. Well, <laughs> that well, one still applies. Then don't even folks. don't get up my. If you're getting dressed this morning, and you're tempted nylon. to do that. Don't. <laughs> but yeah, they're cream color, but that's okay. <laughs> they're close enough. Uh, so it's like I said, it's Wednesday, and it is. so uh, as we are every Wednesday, we. We come to you with our Tennessee Valley This Morning <laughs> show. We are uh, um, celebrating the start of spring, which we started are. yesterday. Goodness. Uh, winter was winter over because is... it was rough last week. I mean, it was so cold. Burr. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we were we got back from Florida this we weekend. Did. We had to go to Florida. Kim's mother broke her leg for ba lack of a better, oh, her knee, really. Just her kneecap. She just fractured And, uh, well, it's it's enough where <laughs> it's we had to go to down and help her out. <laughs> Thank God that she lives in Florida, not North Dakota. Right, exactly, because we wouldn't have gone to help her if she lived in North Dakota. Uh, but yeah, so we got back from Florida, and it was funny, when we were down there, we, we have weather apps on our phone for here, and we noticed that the other day here, it was hotter than it was, it was in Florida, warm. 89 it degrees. It was, it was, it was a lot warmer here. So it's still considered winter at the time, and so now we're... But thank so we goodness, we're into spring, and, and it's all good. Spring has sprung. Spring has sprung. And uh, if, if you don't believe it, just ask the birds. I don't know if <laughs> right. you I know, you know, lately. under the porch I saw today, what? they started again. Every, we have, you know, a covered porch, and every year they want to, under, the two end columns, and there's already one while we were gone they've almost got one completely built again again and then once they started i don't have the heart to go you you can't live here right i mean because they're you, you can't know, touch they're just them birds. after they start Especially well they haven't laid the eggs yet they're just still breaking but i mean it's like three quarters of the way done and so i'm like do i really want them to have to they start work all fast. over again I, and they work hard they're busy joe take a it's the take well it's a, those little those little tweety birds that we have that do it i mean i don't know what they are but they're yeah. very busy they're very busy they're, and they're, and they, they're scary because when you go out, you know, a couple of times I've seen them checking me out, looking at me, staring well. at me. I'm thinking, you're not going to come peck my eyes out like the movie The Birds. No, Joe, they're I realize it is big, you. but <laughs> they're, just, they're, just they're thinking, thinking, is that a tree? Good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but uh, so spring has sprung. Spring has sprung. And uh, we've got a great show for we you do. today to start uh, this, this spring season out. Uh, tell us who we have on. So you I'm going to put you on the spot again. You did yeah. this to me last yeah. week. Amy Hicks is here, and she's here from Helping Paws Healing Hearts, and she's got her baby Daryl here. Daryl's a handsome man. Yes, he, he is. is. He's a or a handsome Darryl dog. Daryl and his other brother Daryl. <laughs> his other. Um, he's a, a beautiful um, therapy uh, dog that she has, and she has Black several. Lab. That she will tell us about and she has written a new book and so we're going to be hear hearing from Amy and we also have Tammy and Candace in the house and they are the the premier bakers here in Cleveland and they've won a competition in, yes, in uh, Chattanooga uh, that uh, they, they just beat all the competition mm -hmm. and I don't mean that as an egg whites I mean they slayed them with, they, uh, they with their cake and their their uh, beautiful decorating she did a deer that I mean Joe would have shot it if you had a gun and yeah, she I, knew how to do that well I'll tell you if if you have <laughs> Have, uh, if you have the opportunity, if you have the paper from Sunday, right. where you have an opportunity to get a copy, check it out. I guess it's in the lifestyle section. No? No, it's in the business section. <laughs> business in the section. Business section. Business section, you'll see a big article about Tammy and Candace and the, and the cake right. that they so go, had. So go buy the banner and get and one can. of those get Sundays. Yes, Sunday. you can. Or you can go online, I'm sure, at uh, the ClevelandDailyBanner.com. Yeah, but I think they're in the house. ClevelandBanner.com. Yeah, oh. they're in the house. And then, of course, who else? Well, Ron Moore, of course. Right. I mean, Ron Moore is here every Wednesday to either tell us something that's true or to make something up if he has it. About history. About history. <laughs> and uh, it's always interesting, though. It doesn't it matter if it's true or he made it up. That's right. Uh, it's usually it's usually true. Though. It is usually if, true. We just give him a hard time. Debbie tells him it's true. If right. Well, you know Debbie had to tell him before he got here. It's Debbie has like, to tell him to put his shoes on in the morning. I understand that. 
know, know what, what she's saying? Joking. So don't feel. So don't feel. Yeah, you didn't tell me this morning. Where I, put the I white did. One. I t- you asked. You know, you asked. I did me, ask. You me. asked me which which pair of Skechers, and I was like, Joe, please. I mean, it's just well, shoes. Choose. It was because I was thinking the brown look, the the black look. I understand, but you know. come on. You're so married. I made my decision. <laughs> I made my own decision. And in my mind, it was a good one. 53 years old, 33 later. Who's 53? Later? What are you talking about? The guy over here. That's right. The guy over there. Not uh, Joe. But anyway, he made his own decision this morning, and we're proud. In fact, Thank we might celebrate much. later on this yes, evening. Yes, I think we will. <laughs> Um, but uh, in any case, we sure hope you're having yourself a good morning. We do thank you for joining us thank this you. morning. Remember, we want to thank, and we, we, I try, try to do this each week. <laughs> we want to thank all of our hosts that we have throughout the week. We want to invite you to watch them. Right. Of course, yesterday is Matt and Matt. Right. Uh, uh, Matt Ryerson, Matt Tolbert. and uh, uh, Tolbert's doing a whole, you know, Tolbert's, he's picking yeah. up the slack for Ryerson because Ryerson is just Very really busy, busy these days. Very busy man. Kim, That's Matthew. To, that's your son. Something okay. happened with you know. I'm with sure. With the dolphins, we'll, I'll I think talk to him I know. It. We probably he updates me on on all of it. He's right. on. He's we probably on the got website. Tebow. Well, they they oh, yeah. I we'll don't we'll know. figure that's all another, that one out. That's, that's a, a that's another, another story for another day. Another day. Uh, and not but, Wednesday. Um, right now for Wednesday. But, but yeah, so we got Matt and Matt on Tuesday. On Monday, of course, we have Alan Mincy and we have Tracy Wright. Right. Tracy will be next Monday. Tracy will be next Monday, Monday coming Monday. up. This mm-hmm. coming, yeah. With, uh, and what I found out is Tommy, her husband Tommy, will also be her guest host again. Right, again. So Tracy and, they and get all, I mean, she's really nice to him. She makes yes, me she look is. bad. She really, I told really her that. Does. I sent I her an email today. and I said, you guys do a great job, but not for anything. You make me look bad. Yep. And, and she, uh, she said something like, nobody can make you look bad. Something yeah, like you that. Need to learn, <laughs> you need to learn from watching Tracy, Kim, on how to treat your husband and I be know. submissive I and know. all the rest, as <laughs> any happen. good wife would do. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's Monday. And then, of course, we're Wednesday. And we then are. Thursday is Nancy Kaysen. Mm-hmm. Talk about submitting. I bet Flavus has that chat. Who are you <laughs> kidding me? Nancy, anybody that knows Nancy Kaysen knows that she submits to Flavus <laughs> Kaysen. He cracks the whip in that house. <laughs> he wears right. the pants in that house. Um, and then Friday, we've got Rob uh, uh, Alderman and Ryan Faricelli that That's do right. the, uh, the Friday show. So we invite you to watch them as well That's right. uh, throughout the week. Uh, we have this on every single morning. <laughs> We're on 6.30 to 7.30 as you're watching now. And then we replay this at noon. So if you want to catch it again and you're excited about watching it again, <laughs> call your friends. It's on from noon to 1. There you go. All right. So... Uh, I think we're going to take a break. Let's Want to do. do that? I'm We've ready. got our pretty spring flowers here. No, those are actually mums. I, the tulips are back there. Oh. We'll have to switch. We'll switch I did that, that. out. I did that. I put you, those up did there. Did you put the mums up? I did. I should have known. What's wrong I didn't with look, mums? Nothing's wrong with mums except for that's the fall. I mean, the oh. tulips are back there. I thought they were spring. I, know, I thought they looked. We're sorry. They're shiny. They're shiny. They're colorful. But so they're they not must, blue. And usually right, that's so what So these aren't good? No, All right, so we'll do a little. We'll get rid of these. Right the tulips there. are back there. The spring, the, the spring sprung back oh, there. All right, I'll put these up then. So these are spring. I don't. I oh, didn't thank know. thank you. We brought me flowers. Yes, I did. Oh, you're too good. I didn't know. I was thinking that the. I didn't know oh, they were. Oh, let's take a break and then we'll fix them. How about no, that? No, I want to talk about the fact that. Uh, but so these look better. You think? I know they do. Okay. All right, I'll take your word for it. Thank you. All right, yes, yeah, so let's take a break. Let's do We're going to be back with our show, more of our show, and our first Amy guest. Hicks is Amy coming Hicks. back. And Daryl. And Daryl. What a sweetie. Right after this commercial break. Please stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Ford, board certified in anti aging medicine and pain management. Have you had recent decrease in energy, lack of sex drive, feel moody, grumpy, or sad? If so, you may have low testosterone and be a candidate for bioidentical hormone replacement. Listen to what two of my patients have to say. Before I came to the Ford Clinic, I had to have a nap every day. When I got off work, I'd lay around, really didn't want to do much, and felt real lazy. I've noticed since I had the testosterone implant that I could go a good eight hours doing the things I enjoy doing. I had it done, took about 25, 30 minutes five months and I'm doing good. My stomach, my muscles, they've completely changed. My fat level has dropped. I get to go out and run, exercise with my son. My muscles are just getting stronger. If you'd like to change your life, please call me at Ford Center for Pain Management and Anti-Aging Medicine at 423-400-9115. It's a very simple process and it's well worth it. I'm Byron Winters with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Contact me for all of your business insurance needs. From general liability to workers' comp, commercial auto, and business umbrellas, Landmark Insurance has you covered. Hyperbaric Services of East Tennessee is now open in Cleveland. 
Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is an incredible treatment, clinically tested for a variety of physical and neurologic conditions, including autism, migraine headaches, even sprains and injuries. It is a simple, safe, and painless process that raises a patient's oxygen level, providing an array of health benefits. So whether you're dealing with a weekend sports injury, chronic condition, or looking for anti-aging, you owe it to yourself to explore what hyperbaric services can do for you. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. Larry, that's Hello and welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. I'm always morning. talking, you know that. Yes, she is. And I always say, I hate, I'm sorry that I was talking while you were interrupting. But this is not the same case because you were talking right before we came back. But we're back now. But we're back and I was talking about and to Daryl. And were. he was talking back a little bit. He was going, no. Well, we'll introduce Daryl. All right, and guys. This is, this, is, <laughs> this is Amy Hicks and this is her buddy and a therapeutic dog. This is Daryl. Amy, tell us a little bit about what you do and how you do it so All well. Right. well thanks. And congratulations. She's great with child. Yes. Yes. I, I was, I Thank was, you for being here. I was hoping you would say That's that. Right. I, I look a little longer. Uh, it's right I'm on here. camera. I'm pregnant. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, Helping Paws Healing Hearts is a nonprofit organization here in Cleveland. Um, this is actually our going on our fifth year, and it grew out of my job as a school counselor with right. Cleveland City Schools, taking my dogs, dogs, plural, <laughs> dogs. I had Daryl <laughs> and Larry, and now Addie, to work okay. with me to work with children therapeutically in the school counseling setting. Mm. Um, it has since grown from that to just encompass a number of things throughout our community um, and pretty heavily working with children um, and just kind of blossomed the past two years grief. Right, wow. with the tornadoes and grief the, and with the, the displacement. Grief the tornadoes, grief from family death, um, we have a lot of fatalities and death here yeah. in our community, yeah. it seems and it greatly affects everyone, but children are affected, and we don't always think of how children grieve differently. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have two grief camps a year. We call them Help, um, Healing Hearts Weekend, Okay. and they're just amazing. And when I say that, people say, Amy, how can a grief camp be amazing? Well, we incorporate pet therapy which if you don't know what that is, it is totally having a dog present. And as you can tell right now, I'm petting Daryl. I mean, research even shows your blood pressure is lowered, your stress level is lowered, and people just feel better with a pet around. Right. So we utilize pet therapy, art therapy, play therapy, and music therapy. And we get the kids in there, so they're grieving in their own way with all of those different therapies. Right. We just had one last weekend. Okay. We had 28 children. Wow, um, that's great. Yes. 28 children, that's really good. 28 children from all over our community. Um, all Bradley County Schools, Cleveland City Schools, it's free. Um, that's what our fundraising throughout the year, of course, pays for those. It's free to the children. Their food's provided all weekend, all the wonderful activities. But um, we, we have to a year. I would really like to up it to three to, to four, three or four because I cap the cap um, the camp at twenty five kids, and each year I can take way more than way that. more than right. that. And I guess you find that children sometimes relate or will open up when they're talking to a, a dog, you know, because I know I tell ours on Joe all the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's just something that they. I mean, and it, and also with their calm, you can see how calm Daryl is. That that kind of has a, a relaxing quality on the kids, especially if they're kind of uncomfortable, that his, his presence kind of relaxes them as it, well. It's so very true. And, and we even had children last weekend who maybe hadn't even opened up about right. the death in their family, um, not too much to their, to their parents or whoever they were residing with. And they did come in and right. tell things yeah. to Daryl. Yeah. And right. that opened the door for them. And then that Oh, us. look at him. Yeah, He's like, that's right. Knows. Tell me your well, secrets. We, I'll, I'll tell you no lies. We says. were um, we were in Florida, as we said, this past week. And, and, and Kim's uncle was talking to me. He had seen something on television. 
that he just, he said it just really was astounding to me. But he watched the program. It may have been 2020 and something, but they had uh, dogs, these, these two, um, uh, I guess they were, for lack of a better term, uh, kind of, uh, they were like our dog Bailey, which was a big kind of um, golden, what was retriever, golden mix. retriever mix kind of dog, bigger dog. He said, and the people had two twins. One was autistic, mm -hmm. and the other one um, had some other problems. But the dog was uh, kind of, for lack of a better term, ministering to the two children in two different ways. The they understood that the autistic dog was, I mean, oh, sorry, dog, <laughs> the autistic child was not able to communicate right. or to understand. And needed the language. love and the hug yes. part, yes. Mm -hmm. which the dog did that with that, but the other kid did not want the dog on him hugging, so right. he would just go sit by the other child and not really, and he knew how, it was like he senses, sensed it. And then they had another smaller dog, and they had another child that had uh, diabetes, and the mm -hmm. other dog could sense, and, and when the, the child's blood sugar was high, and would just start barking continuously. And that's how, and they kind of knew, they put that together with the blood sugar being high, and he, he sensed it. And so we were talking about our dog, Bailey, that mm -hmm. sat with a couple of cancer patients that lived in our neighborhood, that she would just go to their home and sit for an hour or you two. You didn't want Bailey showing up on your doorstep. Yeah. For, right. invited, it was, it was like, no, but, but, but they have that sixth sense, so to speak. They do, they do. And they're, they know how to- They're smart, it's amazing how, how smart they are. I mean, it kind of makes us look bad at times, Joe. But Amy has written a book. Yes. You have Sit, Stay, Heal, yes. as in H-E-A-L. Yes. Um, and so tell us a little bit about the book and, and where you can get it and, uh, you know, what's it, you know, it's surviving life, life storms, it, it says. Is. Uh, unfortunately, a bad thing had to happen for the book to happen, um, and that was our home, of course, was hit last April oh, by the tornado mm -hmm. um, just this week. We have finished up the last electrical part. Um, we were very blessed. Our home stood, but we did receive quite significant sure. damage. And it was a very traumatic event. Sure it was. And um, truthfully, this was part of my healing as well right. in being able to share our story. And it's a story of hope. Um, from the tornado, from moving on, from that bad things do happen, but you go on. But it is told, of course, from the dogs. And the reason right. I brought Daryl today is Daryl is actually the narrator of the book. Oh, see, he um, does speak. I knew he spoke. <laughs> it's told from Daryl, Larry, and Addie, which is our newest puppy. She has one more test to take, and she will be a certified therapy dog as well and begin working with me. But it's just an amazing story. It's It's... Not because I wrote it, but the people that have already read it have just enjoyed it, have um, found it to be very therapeutic as well. And of course, it's not just for children, it's for adults right. as well. I think they will enjoy it. Um, anyone who's been through something traumatic and, and Daryl, the, the dogs talk <laughs> about their trauma with the right. tornado. Yeah. and. Um, they also just talk about different traumas in life and how we all go through them and how now, you continue on. Amy, let me ask you, what, what, just when you said that earlier with Addie, what does, what's the criteria? What does a dog have to do to become certified as a therapeutic dog? There are actually quite a bit. Really? Um, you start with basic obedience training, you take the canine good citizen test, and then you actually pass um, an actual therapy dog association test, okay. which is a series of 13 different tests. And um, those are, are all on the internet via Therapy Dogs International, if someone's very interested okay. in that, certainly check that out. Um, the state of Tennessee doesn't necessarily require that your dog be certified, but mm -hmm. I highly recommend if sure. you're taking your dog somewhere very public, you want that. You want to know that your dog is incredibly calm. And, and you, you want to want, know that it's yeah. been put through the, exactly. the test. It's, of it's a lot of windows. temperament right. because every dog is not that great. No. I mean, Our chihuahuas right. would not do well. I'm an amazing <laughs> dog lover, but yes. if my dogs didn't have the right temperament, I wouldn't take them into a school with 600 kids sure. and, and yeah. let everyone pet them. So. Now, do you, is this therapy, I know that you work in the school system and you work for the city school system, Yes. but there are a lot of kids out there that aren't necessarily in that system. Are you available or is there something out there that's available that if maybe there's some parents out there that they know that there's some issues, but you don't really know quite and they have it open that they think that maybe a pet might be able oh, to, to, you know, in a sense, to minister to that child in their special way. Yes, well, I do work for Cleveland City Schools and I incorporate my dogs with right. that. 
But Helping Paul's Healing Hearts is actually my nonprofit. That's a totally separate business. Okay. That's after school. That's go. weekends. That's um, the grief camps, summer programs. So my website is Helping Paul's, P A W S, HealingHearts.com. All of our information is there, our contact information. Um, the book is actually at the printer. This is the only copy that hey, I have. Aren't so, we special? Um, <laughs> yes. So um, we're hoping to um, have that up on our website within the next week. Okay. But you can check out the website, HelpingPaulsHealingHearts.com. And we're not going to sell the books, but we're going to do it for a donation. Wonderful. The donation, of course, goes to the nonprofit. Um, and we want to get these books out to anyone, of course, who was... Um, you know, Thanks. affected by the tornado, but anyone else who just may want a story about hope. And, right. it, you know, as we say in the book, someone's trauma might be cancer. It might right. be a death in the family. Um, so everyone's traumas are different. Right. So sure. we really want to bring hope to the community through our books, through the dogs, of course, because the dogs are who the children and adults too. Yes. I yeah. think you guys yeah. like them. But people in our community really do like the dogs because they just have so much unconditional love. Yes, exactly. We just love to have Amy. I mean, we just love yeah, having it. you here, and we're so proud of what you do. We thank you for being here today. And, Daryl, it was so good to see you again. You're such a handsome guy. Yes, isn't he is. He's a handsome guy. <laughs> and you look a lot like Larry. Or Larry looks a lot like you. <laughs> <But> we, <laughs> I just got a whiter like, face. But, <laughs> they both do. But thank you so much thank for you coming. Guys. And you guys, check out her website. I mean, it's a great place place to go it's a great place to as a, a nonprofit to uh, put your money towards because she does a great job and the guys do a great job too and we'd like Helping to meet people. we haven't met Addie yet yeah, but we're, she, we're hoping we're, that's and right congratulations that's right congratulations. congratulations on your own you. little bump yeah, there and they, so it's a baby girl and she'll it's be here in June girl in June yes, well yes, congratulations I know yes, that was much. one of those <laughs> yes, yes, but yes. now it's exciting <laughs> that's very, right very excited that's right well thanks again Thank you guys. Thank All you right. for being with us, Amy. All right, folks, we're going to be back. We got Tammy and Candace and Ron and a bunch more stuff happening That's here right. in Tennessee Valley this morning. We might change back to mums. <laughs> we, we might. I mean, you know, mums the word. Uh, we will be back right after this. Please stay tuned. That hung in the antlers and the banner at the bottom of the cake said, The hunt is over. <laughs> That was the antlers made of sugar, too? Uh-huh. You're kidding. Uh-uh. Everything was made. You could you, eat the entire thing. Now, I do know, uh, I do know that it was in the paper, and, and, but you can't see it. It's, it's black and white photo. It's not in color. But if somebody wants to see this, this picture of this cake, I know you showed me. I guess it was it's on, on our website, website. siftedbakery.com. Yeah. It's also on our Facebook page, and there's also a link there to the article in the banner. Okay, okay. And, and you can see it. It's on our Facebook page in our pictures gallery as well. Right. Now, what what uh, what award did you win? Um, it is the Chattano Chattanooga Cake Ace competition. Okay. Um, you compete among other bakeries sure. from Chattanooga, North Georgia, okay. or whomever. We were the only Cleveland bakery there. Uh, it was hard. Oh, I bet. The cake weighed about, it probably weighed close to 225 pounds. Wow. And I know we talked, we talked the other day when we, you were talking to me about this, and I kept thinking, I know uh, Kim likes to watch those aches, cakes shows, right. on, and they have to move it, and they're taking mm -hmm. so much time. And I asked you, is that a worry, or is that a fear? But you said, Candace, uh, Tammy said that you guys, when you're moving that thing, it's ready to move. You, it's not uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa, you got to work, because you guys got it solidly placed there when it's ready to be moved. Yeah, we spend a lot of time on the engineering of cake. Yeah. You, you have to. Um, we do wedding cakes that are five tiers. You know, those are four, five feet tall. Yeah. Um, wow. So we spend probably a good portion of our time just in making sure that the structure of the cake is right before it's ever baked, before we start anything else. We know the structure and it's it's ready to go. Right. And we've never had one that's fallen, cracked, tilted, Now ever. did anybody's, anybody's at the show fall? No. Nope. Last year, oh. they said that someone um, was bringing it into the loading dock and they didn't make it in the door oh before my God. it fell. Oh, oh. Which is devastating. <laughs> I you can imagine. You put in that much time and money into something and then just the competitiveness of right. it. Right. And then to have it fall after you get there is, uh, 
yeah. Then, uh, then, and if it's and if it's two of you doing it, it's always the other one's fault. I can sure. imagine Kim and I doing that. I would have to be blaming her for the fact that it fell, and of course she would be blaming me. When they uh, get too heavy, I have husband who helps, and uh, occasionally my son. And one cake in particular. Um, men are stronger than women. Thank sorta. you. Well, okay, <laughs> men are physically stronger than women. Um, and he was helping me carry this cake, and it was easy, 200-pound cake. Right, right. And I had one side, and he had the other. Well, to me, this cake was extremely heavy, but for him, it wasn't so bad, and he was pushing the cake up. He was raising it up too high, and I'm just trying to hang on. Almost. Oh. Almost dropped the cake. It was a wedding cake. Oh, my goodness. It was the one there's in the paper. No, there's oh, no, really? Yeah, it's that this one. one right here? Mm -hmm. There's no do-overs. You don't, this is not like a birthday that comes again next year. Right, when you're doing right. a wedding, it's a one-time deal. And you can't, oh, I was so mad. I was so mad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, but, you know, cake suffered no damage. It never hit the ground. It just became a little unstable and scared right. the life out of me. Right. Um, so... I try really hard to only move cakes with Candace women um, because there's such a difference in the right. way we handle cake and the way y'all handle cake. Well, I mean, and we're just like, you know, bull in a china closet, you, right. know, ah, you know, and just move it over there. And yeah, it could be, you'd have to be a little bit delicate, I think, you to make sure. You do indeed. Now, just uh, ballpark, I know every cake's probably different, but this particular one that you won the award with, how long did it take to put that together? Um, that cake, well, I had done it once before, so I knew what I was in for. Right. Um, and and doing a practice cake gives you the opportunity to you know deal with any problems, and so that cake went together a lot faster than the first one. The first one took seven days. The second cake was three days. Wow. Which wasn't all that bad, and I didn't decide to add the arrow, the heart. Um, to those antlers till we were on our way back from Chattanooga on Saturday afternoon. Okay. Competition was Sunday. We had to move the cake Sunday morning. So it was, that was the last minute decision. And, and it worked really well. Jay Qualls, who, was, who owns Jay Qualls Cakes in Nashville, he was on The Next Great Baker. He was, I think he was runner up. He was number okay. two. Um, and he was one of the judges. And I think for me, the, the greatest part of that show was getting to spend time with him and him advising. And he, yeah. he came to our booth and he talked to me about what we do. And he said, what do, you, what do you charge for this cake? And I would tell him and he would say, no, no. Um, because we live in different areas. Yeah. Um, a market here can only bear what it can bear here. Right. Nashville's a different story. New York, Los Angeles. So he he has a hard time with what I charge for cakes. Right. Um, but still, and this is the upper end of that market when you're dealing with a cake that's the groom's cake. That cake we have priced it now. Oh my, since the show, I, I couldn't tell you how many calls we've gotten about that cake. Really? Um, to make one similar mm -hmm, to it? Yeah. For them? Uh, and um, because every guy, you know, weddings are real girly. Mm -hmm. And every guy that came to that show wanted that cake. Right. Because they right. actually got something in their wedding right. that was them. Right. For the most part, it's, it really is about the bride. Um, and we all know traditionally what groom's cakes look like, usually. Yeah. You know? And so with this idea, that would be something that would be more... Uh, appropriate, I guess, would right. be. Right. We've done groom's cakes. Uh, we had a groom who uh, grew up in Florida, and he has a love for treasure hunting and pirate ships. Okay. So we did a pirate ship for him. Right. And he, they loved their animals, and we sculpted all four of their pets and put them in a treasure chest on the top deck of right. the giant pirate ship with the sh big sugar sails and skull and crossbones. And we've done... Well, we did a Jack Daniels bottle that looks just like a Jack I Daniels bottle. I saw that one. Mm -hmm. That was killer, too. Um, so, yeah, it really is. It gives, it, you know, and brides, they seem to be the ones that are looking for great cakes for the right, grooms. Right, right. Because I think that they know, too, you know, that it's all their decision and it's all right. about them. So everybody's looking for an opportunity to do something special for the groom. 
Right. Um, but that cake has been priced, um, I think that we priced it at $750. The, now, the, the, you're talking about the deer? The mm -hmm. deer. Really? Now, this is the thing. Obviously, if you have the cake made, it's cake. But, Candace, you, I can't imagine the groom, or I can't even imagine the people for the birthday party, even, like, cutting into the cake. I, yeah. Well, it was funny because um, when we did the deer cake the first time, um, it was delivered to a local restaurant. And when we went in... People thought that it was, we didn't realize they thought this, but they thought that it was actually a mounted deer's head for this birthday. And so, you know, people were looking at it, and then we got it over there, and then it came time to cut it. And when Tammy took the knife and went into the side of that deer and cut it and pulled out cake, people started getting up from their tables and coming over and taking pictures because they could not believe that that was completely full of right. cake. Um, so it, it is. It's... Um, the pirate ship cake was the first one that I actually cut into myself. We stayed and served that cake because it was right. there was such a structure to the wedding cake and to the groom's cake. Um, and it was odd to take a knife into something that you spent that much artistic time in. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was really neat because the way that we cut that one is we cut it from the back. And so from the front, it looked like, still looked like the pirate right, ship. Right. Um, and all the, all the groomsmen and all the men that were there at the wedding were gathered around that cake because they couldn't wait for you to cut into it to see, you know, because it just doesn't, it doesn't look like it. I guess that had to give you an anxiety attack to cut into it. It doesn't anymore. At this point, I think it's part of the fun of it is actually getting to cut yeah. in and for people to realize that you can have a pirate ship and in that one it was chocolate, uh, but you can have strawberries, you can have, you know, it can look like one thing on the outside and then when you cut into it you have Something this great different. buttercream and great flavors and that it doesn't just look good it tastes really good uh, and this is a question and i was thinking this when i was talking to you the other day there when i left there i was thinking okay so like i, I guess it's it's down to a science probably by now but how do you know how much cake to make like how much batter to use to make uh, you know the size to be this and then the well, it depends. It depends on if you're doing a wedding cake that's a tiered cake. We have a formula that tells right. us um, a 12-inch cake will feed this many people. So we, we know that well in advance on those types of cakes. The 3D cakes, the carved yeah. cakes, that's hard. Um, we always, always bake extra. Right. Um, and extra is never enough. Right. <laughs> And then we carve away the bulk of the cake that we bake to get it to what yeah. it needs to be. And you just, you just know. You, With a 3D cake, you cannot do the calculations like you do on a round cake. Sure. And you just know, okay, it's going to need to be this big to work. Right. You don't want a deer head that's this big. Right. So sometimes, like, that deer would feed 150 people, but... When we started out, we probably had 350 servings. Right. And all of that goes as waste. Okay. And you, there's nothing you can do with that but just... And we do have people that call us, especially after they saw that deer cake, that will say, well, I just want to get it for my boyfriend or my husband. Can you get it to where it just feeds like eight people? Right. And the answer to that is yeah. no, because it takes us the same amount of time to construct antlers, to construct all of the features to it's do actually all the, more difficult to you're work doing it on small. a tiny scale and yeah. so you know as much as we would love to do that to spend three days on a cake for eight people what we tell them is you if you order that kind of cake you're ordering it because that is the impression you want that's right. the look that you want you're not paying for your servings right. you're paying for that cake and it still may cost you 700 bucks because it takes the time that's that right. it takes right. i mean come on right now, if somebody is watching that, that wants to get in touch with you guys about making a specific cake, whether it be for a wedding or a birthday party or a graduation or whatever, um, I know you got your website. Tell us that. And then a phone number where they can get in touch with you. Well, one of the best ways that they can get in touch with us is through our email because okay. our emails come directly to our phone because we live in the age of technology at this point. Right. Um, and we can respond back and forth no matter what we're doing, which is partners. P A R T N E R S okay. at siftedbakery.com. Okay. Um, you can go to our website, which is www.siftedbakery.com, and it has an inquiry form on it where you can contact us. Okay. Um, our phone number is 478 9550. 
um, and then we have our Facebook. But if you Facebook us, we do not do price quotes or designs right, right. on Facebook. We okay. usually at that point will refer you to call us okay. um, just because it's on the World Wide Web and it, it makes it a little difficult to do. Now, you just mentioned that cake took you about seven days, some take you three to four days. Uh, what's a turnaround time? Like how much in advance, I guess the longer, the better, the more, but yeah. mm -hmm. how, if somebody wanted something done, what, what's the, the, the shortest amount of time that you could be it, notified? It really just depends on the weekend because we're in wedding season at this point. Right. A lot of our weekends are booked with weddings. Um, sometimes someone can call us. Now for the deer's head, we have to have some notice, but sometimes we'll get a call and we'll have a free weekend or we'll have space that we can fit it in. So it's worth calling if you have a last minute cake. But a lot of times, if you're talking about a wedding cake, you want to get within three months or or later. I mean, you okay. know, you don't want to yeah. you don't yeah. really want to get within any shorter time than three months to book a wedding cake just because. But like I said, we always have those spare weekends where we go, oh look, we have nothing on this weekend, and then we'll get that phone right. call and, <laughs> and fit in that cake. We try our best. Um, the only the only thing that restricts us is when we have a wedding cake, we try to only do one cake on that weekend because that bride has paid for sure. our time and has paid for the attention on that cake. And um, the attention to detail is really important, especially to Tammy being the artist. Um, right. it, it's extremely important. And so occasionally we can fit in a birthday cake or something on the side um, and then you know, other than that, we try to work with you. Sometimes we can, if you'll agree to do it a day or two early, we can we can fit a cake in. Now, uh, and real quick, this is another question before we go here. I want to ask, okay, do you, like with the with the cake off, uh, the bake off that you were at, uh, they had the theme, okay? Mm -hmm. um, is that what you work with? Do you rather them just give you a theme and you guys develop something in your mind? Or would you rather them have something in mind like I would like, a bass jumping out of the water kind of a cake. Uh, I want a kite, you know, I think or whatever. That, I think we like both because, um, like I said, Tammy's extremely artistic and uh, and doesn't doesn't like to be bored. And so it's fun when they come and say, I want a pirate ship cake because that can mean a lot of things. Right. We had um, a lady in town that wanted a Chris Craft boat for her husband. And again, to, you know, to construct that was interesting. But, you know, it's also fun when they say it is my daughter's 18th birthday and I want something in these colors and these are the things she likes, but I'm just going to give you free reign on it because then she gets to let her creativity flow right. and come up with, you know, different things that she's seen, put different things together. And so um, we can do it either way. We get both. We have people that know exactly. Right. And then we have people that say, I just want an amazing cake and I don't know. I don't know what I want. So we work with both well, I think. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. If you check out their website, Facebook, uh, you'll be able to see all the wonderful cakes that they've made and the kind of work that they do and the time that they put into these. It's it's phenomenal. It's it's. And if you've ever watched any of the shows on the Cooking Network or, or uh, a Food Network, you'll if any of those shows, you kind of see this is the same idea. And this is what these folks do. It's the exact same idea. It's just here in Cleveland. You know, it's not over in Los Angeles or New York somewhere. But uh, again, the Facebook and website and phone number. It is. If you go on Facebook, you can type Sifted Bakery in the search bar and it'll pull us up that way. You can go to www.siftedbakery.com, okay. which I believe also has a link to our Facebook, if I'm okay. not mistaken, and to contact us. And then we have our phone number, 423-478-9550. And then, of course, our emails, partners at <coughs> siftedbakery.com, or you can do that through our website either way. Terrific. Well, we thank you all so much for being with us, and congratulations on winning the, the prize. And you got to check that article out, folks. Again, it was in Sunday's Banner. We'll show it to you here. It's like huge. It's on both sides. That's, I don't think you can see that, but this is the deer head here, and this is the article. But either online, clevelandbanner.com, or pick up a copy of the Southern, or Sunday edition of the Cleveland Banner this past Sunday. What was it, the 18th? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, check it out for yourself, and you can see the work that they do and all the time that they put in. But we do appreciate you all being with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Tammy Jensen and Candace Lewis of Sifted Bakery. So give them a call. All right, we're going to be back with Ron Moore and some lies after this commercial break. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. 
Uh, WTMB, Joe and Kim Palo again with you. Again. We have now we are well, Kim is back again. We're now joined by our good friend Ron now Moore. Now the quality's going to go up now. That I mean, not right. that it wasn't with Candace and Tammy. Yeah, well, gosh, Kim, I know. Just dog our guests. I'm not dogging I, them. Wow. I, I can I listen to them talk about food all I day long. Yeah, I they, could too. I mean, and they do great. They yeah, do great. They do. I mean, beautiful. Not well, you know, beautiful. But man, it tastes good. Yeah. It's one thing to be beautiful inside and out, right. Joe. Thank you. I want to pass the secret on how you got. Daryl would be so good. There's a cat sitting over <laughs> on the monitor. Yeah, not a real cat, but I, I would look over and went, "What? What?" So. He, yeah, just, Dar- he kept staring at it, but he was a sweetie. He just wanted. I think he just wanted to sit with it. But Daryl is a sweetheart. He was he? a nice looking. He's very, very yeah, sweet. He's dog. a good boy. He and is. Ron's a sweetheart. Yes, yeah. you are. You're Ron a comes every I'm, I'm a big, bigger dog, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but Ron, of course, Ron and Debbie Moore have Old Town Cleveland every Saturday morning, 10 to noon on Whoop Radio 99.9, where they talk about the same type of stuff we talk here, just more in depth. They take your phone calls and you can kind of... Uh, Talk to them about uh, the you different things. You have to talk to us or listen to us. To us right? And this Saturday, what's your topic? Uh, the Vanishing Appalachians. Okay. Uh, we awesome. have a gentleman who for 40 years have went around our area uh, in the Appalachians and talked with people, interviewed people, have pictures, uh, stories about Popcorn Sutton, probably the most famous moonshiner. You know, <laughs> they have stories about him and, you know, and just uh, how, how it's changing here and uh, how our heritage is changed a lot you know some good some bad right always. right and then i guess that's with any any and kid. then it's after the after that they're going to the uh the museum and they'll be making presentations down there and we actually have a uh, moonshine still going to be set up down there ah uh, not P. operational D- well Dad matthews if he can get it empty before, <laughs> right. yeah. before he takes it down there, yeah. uh, he's going to take it. Down oh, he'll empty it all right yeah. and, and <laughs> take it out in little jugs at a time, yeah. little bomb. I mean, the uh, mason jars. They'll be for sale around back, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> like the old days. Uh, but what's our topic today on Tennessee Valley this morning? We're going to talk about Bradley County and Cleveland's very first bank. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. And it's very interesting. Uh, you know, Bradley County formed in 1836, and we were just a small community, not much manufacturing. Almost everybody here was just farmers, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and carpenters and woodworkers and things of that nature. You know, a lot of people uh, saw mills and stuff. So uh, we didn't have a lot of need for a bank because it was just farm trade, you know. you, you know, Had a mattress. Had mattress, somewhere to yeah, keep it. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> they probably made the mattress out of that's straw. Not, that's the truth. Right. But uh, the copper mines opened up, and the copper mines brought a lot of industry in here, and then the railroad comes through. Those two things made Bradley County start growing tremendously. The railroad was, of course, a big hit, and then there was tons of wagon traffic coming down from uh, the copper mines to load here at the uh, uh, on the railroad to ship right. it out. So that was very, very important. And then those wagoneers uh, had to eat somewhere, and they had to buy uh, feed for their horses. They had to do this, so, so shops, and so retail started being formed back then. Then we realized we didn't have a bank. Uh, and you know, money was a different situation back then. It was 18 years before we built our first bank in 1954. Wow, that was the first bank. Not 1954, 1854. 1854. That was, wow, I'm thinking, that was almost. Yeah, Kim was five years old then. <laughs> Just shut yes. your mouth. <laughs> but uh, you know, you all this. So there's a group of individuals went to the state of Tennessee to seek a charter. That's what you had to get a charter from the state of Tennessee. Probably very similar it is today, uh, but. Uh, on February 25th, 1854, 1854 <laughs> uh, Thomas Calloway and some associates were granted uh, a bank charter by the state legislature. Now, the associate stockholders were Alexander Kleeg, Samuel Cogden, William Spahn, and then probably one of the richest men around at that time was Euclid Waterhouse. Okay. Oh, Euclid. Euclid. Well, now we have Euclid <laughs> Avenue. Avenue. We yes. do have a Euclid. And before it was Euclid Avenue, it was Waterhouse Street. Ah. So it is named after him there. And it's mm-hmm. down uh, on the south end of the town, right across the street from where Cleveland Chair burned. That would be right, Euclid Avenue Euclid. across Back the railroad the track. Right. Right. So, uh, uh, so those are, and uh, my understanding that Callaway and uh, uh, Waterhouse put up most of the money there. Uh, and now what's surprising is how much money they used to start. This is 1854. They had to raise $100,000 wow. to start this bank. And they got the charter. It was good for 30 years. Then it had to be renewed. Uh, the state charter said they could. They needed at least $100,000. Uh, but they could not raise more than $950,000. Wow. 
So they raised the 100000 So Callaway was named the president, and they hired Thomas J. Campbell to be their cashier. Hmm. Okay. So the, uh, uh, <laughs> now, interesting about this is that they printed their own money. That's you know, what I did. Now, <laughs> I wish he did. Right. <laughs> now, if I could just create some out of somewhere. Was that legal back then? <laughs> oh, yes, that's what everybody, everybody did, did, you know. They printed uh, their and, own, and, that represented your own bank, in right. a sense? Yeah, it, oh, it's okay. money. And uh, uh, take uh, Conasanga Lumber Company over on 411. Right. It still runs today. They had something called Scrip. And Scrip was money. It was sort of like a, a coupon, but it was really just a little money that you give. During the week when you run out of money and you needed flour, you'd go to the, up to the office and they'd give you Scrip, which was equal to money, uh -huh. and you only could spend it at the company store. Yeah. And the company they store you, would up the prices, so they doubled their profits off their people. So it's a little cruelty there, but this is similar to that. Like buy low bonus bucks. Sort of, <laughs> yeah, but better. Kind of. Yeah. Right, but, be but, uh, <laughs> but the script also, in, in the, at Conasaga, it was called Dougaloo. Okay. And so I actually have some of that paper Do money. Do you really? Yeah, but my, my family grew up around Conasaga, so Dougaloo. And uh, if anybody lives around Tinga and... Right. And, and Old Fort and all that area, they'll, they work down there, they would know. So anyway, they could uh, print $200,000 worth, uh, two to one, for how much so, money yeah, they raised. Secured for so they went to the American Bank Note Company of New York. There was a company that printed money for people. <laughs> and uh, so uh, they had that. And uh, another thing of that 100000 I think fifteen to 20000 had to be in gold and silver that they kept there in the bank. In the bank. So actually, so uh, the regional press praised this this new establishment and said they were expressed. I mean, they were uh, they expressed confidence. Excuse me, in the leadership of the new bank, and it was located right there in downtown Cleveland, Tennessee, at the corner of Okoy and First Street. It was a 24 and a half foot by 45 foot space in the Okoy House, which was Cleveland's finest hotel. No okay. kidding. So, so this bank went along, and then something happened, and it sort of had to close. <laughs> what <Something> happened? happened. <laughs> well, it closed in the 1860s uh, of the Civil War. The war. There was a little uh, thing uh, called a war happened. Yeah, war came along, and uh, they had to close. Uh, the copper mine shut down for a while. Their business dropped. Uh, it was a, a, a strange time for merchants there you know right. and the war cost us a lot of money in this area you know the copper mines closing down and uh so they finally opened up a little bit after the civil war about 65 i believe it was and by 1869 they were done now the, i've read some places that they actually went to knoxville and started another branch of this bank and i can't find out where that is that might be the biggest bank in knoxville today i don't know <laughs> but i can't find the answer to that <laughs> So, but uh, 1869, but something happened right along that time after the war, which then there was a new bank come along, and it was called Cleveland National Bank, which was right on the corner of uh, uh, Okoy and Inman Street, and it's still there, and it's the first in the city now, I guess. Yeah. They've okay. These banks changed names so much now, I, I can't keep it up with them, so, but I, if I'm wrong, I believe that is the Cleveland National Bank. If you grew up here, uh, Cleveland National Bank was the big bank for a long time, right across from the... Uh, the summit or the church right, hotel. Right, 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 right. right. So, okay. So, so wow. um, on average, like how many, um, how many, I mean, how, people at the very beginning, it, I guess it took a while for folks to start putting trust and using the bank, mm -hmm. putting their money in there and that. How long did that take before they kind of caught on? That you know, I have found it, but you know, it'd be like a, any new concept coming along. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, and they've, I understand that the, the Okoy bank money, and I've seen, I've seen a picture of it. I've never actually seen one. Uh, it was a beautiful looking little dollar with a, some kind of picture of a lady on it and it said Okoy Bank across it. And uh, during the Civil War, you ran into a lot of banks that done that Third National Bank, Confederate money, right, yeah. right. Uh, all that's out there. So, but people just had to start trusting money as we know it today. There, there wasn't checking accounts back then. No, yeah. and that's what is funny to me is because, and you know, and somewhere in the back of your brain, you kind of know this and, I, you know, I, you just have to bring it up because you know you learned it somewhere. But... 
that it was just solely there was none of this sharing and you know that currency was good anywhere it was that if That's you banked at ask. that bank then their currency was just good now did the merchants in town take that bank because it's the only one they I, took I think their the merchants took to it but it's did, but, the farmers out in the area out there who had never dealt with the bank. Some couldn't read and write. Well, right, you know, that's true. Uh, so uh, they didn't know what this was. It basically, they took corn to town, and somebody traded them uh, chicken. S- chicken for right. it or something of that nature. If you if you went to the doctor, a lot of time the doctor would get paid corn, chickens, or right. whatever. So uh, money was a strange thing. And uh, sometime in America, I still haven't found the date on this, is, but it became almost illegal to put these script money out. You had to start right. paying people in payroll. And I read one place is that, that script money never was really paid as cash. It was sort of that in-between t- time period. But right. mo- most mining con- companies, companies would have had their own stores and you got paid in that script That's money. And then you, the only way you When you bought flour, you paid a dollar more for flour. Also, the Okoye Bank note uh, uh, said that if you took it somewhere else, it wasn't a dollar for dollar exchange. Right. Some people would charge you a fee for mm-hmm. using the paper money. It's kind of like, like using an ATM. I was just going to so say the ATM. Belong with somewhere, so you can, you know, I, I can see that, and I've seen that, and not just in mining, but it was just all, almost kind of all unionized, or, or maybe it wasn't the union back then. That's where they kind of right. came from. But anyone that kind of had that community, whether it be you know building a dam or building, you know, right. logging, whatever it was, when there was that. They had you kind of. They provided right. housing. They provided your banking. I mean, your your you know, merchandise, everything. Your dry goods. Your everything. So you were kind of you kind of belong to them if, if well, you signed you know, up. Uh, uh, the documentary that Will's shooting right now about Candy Creek was exactly that. They built fifteen houses. The roads were so bad right. they couldn't get people in and out. So they provided their homes mm-hmm. and their pay. Uh, they brought their groceries in on uh, barge, and uh, that was living nice until. This thing called TVA come along and says we can't <laughs> we can't have company houses. Right. And basically, they just these people had lived there some of them all their life. Uh, young people born there, they were picked up and moved out, out right. of there. So, yeah. uh, so but that that's where the, those company towns, mill towns, as you heard mm-hmm. them call, you know, up north they had a lot of that, and they were paid with that script money. And mm-hmm. like I say, uh, uh, the owners just really their greed was instead of helping their employees, mm-hmm. they paid them with their paper money, and then. Yeah. And if they wanted to exchange that for real money in town, it wouldn't be a dollar for a dollar. All right, well, Ron, we appreciate you being with us. Oh, yeah. interesting. He is always you know interesting. The most interesting person that we, we talk to. On the show. Uh, on, your on, boy. This show. Right. <laughs> on this segment. On this segment, show. right. <laughs> well, we want to thank Ron for being with us. Of course, Tammy and Candace and Amy Hicks, thank her That's for right. being with us as well. We thank you for watching Tennessee Valley this morning for this Wednesday. Remember, a replay at noon today. We will see you next Wednesday for Kim. I'm Joe and Ron. Have yourself a good week. See ya.